Hey everybody, it's Ann BB. Today is Sunday, March 28th, 2021. I'm Barb Hammer. So I know it's been a while since I've made a, a political a video, serious political video like this, this format. Um, but anyway, I've been wanting to talk about a lot of different things. Uh, so many things going on. Uh, but um, uh, China is always uh, on my mind and i um, um, been busy. I'm moving be moving n next month or so, so busy purging and packing. Anyway, so um, it was suggested to me that I make a video about uh, something, uh, a clip that's been circulating and um, it's getting a lot of attention in, uh, shall we say, pro-China circles, you know, and um, and it was actually featured in a press conference at the Chinese Foreign Ministry in Beijing with uh, this spokeswoman and um, let's see, yeah, Hua Chunying. So she she gave a very she showed the clip. She gave a, a very good speech, um, stating clearly what Beijing's position. Uh, on this topic, and it's about the Uyghurs. Yes, indeed, there's a lot to talk about the Uyghurs, the poor Uyghurs. So the latest thing is, um, you know, the West always doubles down, and so they just pile on, pile on, you know, make a big lie even bigger, and uh, so they're claiming that Uyghurs are, uh, uh, see, cotton production in Xinjiang, where, um, most Uyghurs live. Um, all right, they're using uh, cotton, cotton producers are using forced labor, uh, Uyghurs, <laughs> slave labor, basically. And so clothing manufacturers in the West are refusing to source um, used cotton from Xinjiang. So they're boycotting cotton from Xinjiang for human right over human rights. Um, but it's all like, that's another topic. I will get into that in another video. Um, so she, uh, uh, the F foreign ministry spokeswoman, she showed this clip of this U S colonel, um, very high profile colonel who was, uh, Colin Powell's uh, chief of staff when he was secretary of state. Um, so career Pentagon guy, really. And he's infamous for having prepared the information from the CIA for Colin Powell's speech to the UN, justifying going into Iraq over weapons of mass destruction. So that, so he, yeah, he, um, uh, this is very questionable. The, uh, his name is Colonel, or he's former Colonel Lawrence uh, Wilkerson. So, um, so he's, you know, apparently he's dealt a lot with CIA, and so he was using CIA information, overseeing that information for Colin Powell's presentation to the UN, and all of that propaganda. It was just all a pack of lies. So that's kind of questionable. So he's he's not anti-establishment, so I'm really questioning why he's getting so much attention. Um, he's sort of anti-war in the sense that he wants war to be done the right way, I guess, or for the right reasons. I don't know. So um, he questioned how the Iraq war was handled, I guess. He doesn't question the war on terror, the war of terror. He doesn't question 9-11. Um, so uh, unfortunately, people are saying, bravo, he's telling the truth. Well, in the clip, he uh, it's disinformation. So he will mention, yes, it's true that the US was um, using the Uyghurs to destabilize China. And that's the point that uh, the spokeswoman made in her speech at the foreign ministry in Beijing. Anyway, so uh, there's several, I, um, there are several videos of him. Uh, the Chinese foreign ministry 
it's interesting. I could tell which one, which version they use. So they use this short clip of Wilkerson and it has um, Chinese uh, captioning and English captioning. And so it came from, no, not that one. <laughs> it came from this little channel. Very interesting. This little channel with one subscriber. Um, unless this video, it might be on another channel. I don't know. I found this one. But this is the version that they showed. Um, it says Pacific Dialogue. So maybe there's a Pacific Dialogue. I don't know. I just found it. I said, okay, that's good enough. Um, and I like this clip. But there's a problem I found with it. I'm, this is why I'm very suspicious of video clips. Because um, they can be edited. And this one was edited. I found one edit anyway. So I went and I found... Um, yeah, so the original speech, this is, he spoke in 2018, so it's getting a lot of attention now. Um, so he spoke at the Ron Paul um, Conference on Media and War in Washington, D.C., and he's on the board of the Ron Paul Institute. So he's talking to an establishment crowd, so it's not like he's anti-establishment or anything. And he proudly says that he um had been lobbying on capitol hill for this bill to stop the u.s involvement in the war in yemen or the war on yemen really and uh i remember that bill the problem with that bill was okay the u.s will uh <laughs> won't be involved directly but you know all of its allies in the area like uh saudi arabia and emirates and israel it's okay for them to continue the war so that was bullshit. This is the problem. It's controlled opposition. So this is why I can't stand these anti-war. Like Code Pink was all on board with this bill. And it, this is why I hate the anti-war movement right now because it's not really anti-war. Um, oh, so uh, someone has sent me the link to... Uh, no, not that version. Okay, this version. So I can't stand this channel. This guy... Um, <laughs> I, I'm not going to say the name of his channel. I just call him Nun Nuts. So I know he's um, he's from Canada and he's got a fairly big channel. This has gotten a lot of, he's got over 40,000 subscribers. So he wasn't, um, he's kind of like me. He had been doing videos on his channel. He does like travel. He li He's in China, he's from Canada, Vancouver, I think. And he went to China to teach English, I guess. And, you know, he does these, uh, tr like, travel video videos showing, you know, what things are really like in China. That's fine. But his political videos are crap. Just crap. He puts out a lot of garbage. He has very, like, corporate centrist views. So he doesn't really challenge official narratives, you know, just, and he loves Jimmy Dore or Jimmy Hoare, as I call him. You know, he thinks Jimmy Dore is anti-establishment, which is a joke. And doesn't he doesn't do any research he's not very well informed his political views are not very clear um <clears throat> yeah so he he kind of uh promotes the corporate in there you know they all these i call them the sex pat sausage fest it's all these dudes in china or you know they have chinese uh girlfriends or uh wives or whatever and uh Anyway, they're opportunists. And this guy, he lied to me. He said, oh, I'm not trying to make money. And of course he is. He's trying to make money. He's trying to make money. So he, you know, he asked for money in his videos. And he admitted to me that this is, he's hoping to make this his career. So, but his political videos are crap. And he just put this video out without any commentary or anything. Just like, this is the truth. This U.S. colonel is telling the truth. Well, a little bit, a little bit, but there's a lot of lies in this video. So um, I'm going to play this version. So it's really short, but there's a clip that's missing, very important clip that's link missing from this video. And I will tell you, explain the, the propaganda that he, Wilkerson, has included in this video. We're in Afghanistan as we were in Germany post-World War II, that is for at least a half a century. 
It has nothing to do with Kabul and state building, nothing to do with fighting the Taliban or proving that we can reconcile with the Taliban, and nothing to do with fighting any terrorist group. It has everything to do with three primary strategic objectives. And I really, as a military officer, as a professional, I don't necessarily object to these objectives, but I believe the American people probably ought to be told about them and there ought to be a debate as to whether or not they want to spend their money on these objectives. First objective is to be in the place that Donald Rumsfeld discovered was the most difficult country in the world to get military power into in 2001, and take my word for it, it is. Look at it on a map and leave it there because it is the only hard power the United States has that sits proximate to the central base road initiative of China that runs across Central Asia. If we had to impact that with military power, we are in position to do so in a sense. And second reason we're there is because we're cheek and jowl with the potentially most unstable nuclear stockpile on the face of the earth in Pakistan. We want to be able to leap on that stockpile and stabilize it if necessary. And the third reason we're there is because there are 20 million Uyghurs, and if the CIA has to mount an operation using those Uyghurs, as Erdogan has done in Turkey against Assad, there are 20,000 of them in Idlib, in Idlib in Syria right now. Well, the CIA would want to destabilize China, and that would be the best way to do it, to foment unrest and to join with those Uyghurs in pushing the Han Chinese and Beijing from internal places rather than external. Okay, so that is the video. We're in Afghanistan. Okay. So uh, I will have to repeat. So uh, to clarify, he uh, was an official in the George W. Bush administration as chief of staff to Colin Powell. So he was heavily involved in 9-11, the war <laughs> of terror, as I call it. Um, so he's a 9-11 apologist. He does not talk about 9-11, doesn't touch it. You know, so the, the war, this is the problem. A lot of these anti-war, anti-war figures, uh, they don't question 9-11 or the war of terror. You know, it's blowback. You know, Muslims carried out the 9-11 attacks. That's, they push that propaganda. Um, so the, his speech was called the Empire Strategy, and he's talking about the three objectives. And he doesn't, he does not oppose them. He doesn't oppose, he doesn't oppose any of this going on in Afghanistan. Um, and he, so he gets, um, so he says that the U.S., is in Afghanistan uh, because of China's Belt and Road Initiative, but he gets the name wrong. He calls it the Central uh, Central Belt <laughs> Road Initiative or something. So he gets the name wrong. He doesn't even know what he's talking about. Um, so that part is true. You know, the U.S. is in uh, Afghanistan, Central Asia, Southwest Asia, whatever. Um, it's involved in these places to stop China's uh, trade routes. The Belt and Road Initiative is a very big project. The number two, so he smears Pakistan, making it sound like it's uh, <laughs> unstable and it can't be trusted with nuclear weapons. Um, no, but I, I think, so really pa the problem with they have with pakistan pakistan is getting to its its ties are too close to china so pakistan and china have very good relations that's the problem so there you know he's lying there it's not about the nukes not about the nukes um so they want to destabilize pakistan and i know there's a destabilization campaign in pakistan too not just china and the other places but um and they want to break off. There's like a Baluchistan separatist movement. They want to break off Baluchistan. And there are Uyghurs in Pakistan. So Uyghurs are not just in Xinjiang. They are in Kazakhstan. They're in Central Asia. So, um, you know, the Uyghurs generally are known for being in Xinjiang, but they are in the region. They're in Pakistan, Afghanistan. And so, so then he, you know, the third objective is the Uyghurs is to radicalize them. Um, and to sow discord between the Uyghurs um, and the Han Chinese. And this is what this clip removed apart. And I, there's a little jump. So when he's talking about the Uyghurs, so here, 
Yeah, so this is the full speech. Um, and he says the Uyghurs, and they don't like Han Chinese. In <laughs> um, well, no, I mean, there, there have been tensions uh, in Xinjiang between uh, the Han Chinese and Uyghurs, but that's, um, the West was sowing discord, radicalizing Uyghurs, and the Uyghurs were, you know, as a the, carry out terrorist attacks and Han Chinese I had a Chinese friend from Beijing um, like 10 years ago or a little bit more. And I remember he had, he wasn't a big fan of Muslims and, and Islam. And I realized that it was around the time there had been a lot of terrorist attacks in China carried out by Uyghurs. So it's not that the Uyghurs don't like the Han Chinese, it's the radicalized one, the ones that the West have, has radicalized. And there might be some, you know, I'm not going to say that there aren't uh Uyghur you know Uyghurs have been uh rural areas in China have traditionally been very poor and they tend to be poor and so the Uyghurs have been poor um I mean their living standards has uh, improved dramatically recently so they're doing much better and um but the West was using that they always take uh, like disadvantaged people and parts of the world and radicalize them um so anyway, he, so on the top of the, he says there are 20, he says that there are 20 million Uyghurs in Xinjiang, but I think there's only 12 million. So I think that figure's wrong. I'm, I could be wrong about that. Anyway, um, he also claims, uh, let me find this. He claims that. Oh yeah, he claims that he claims that um, Erdogan is using the Uyghurs against Syria, and he claims that there are twenty thousand Uyghurs uh, in Idlib alone, and that seemed like a lot. I you know I just was digging, 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 and there's a lot of misinformation propaganda that he included in this speech and people are not questioning it and they're kind of lifting him up like yay for Colonel Lawrence Wilkerson he's telling us the truth well no this is what these truth tellers do they might tell you something that's true and it might not be the news I mean I think this information has been out for a while that the Uyghurs were being radicalized Uyghurs in China were being radicalized um so i was looking into the figure about um 20,000 supposedly 20,000 supposedly um in idlib in syria that's in north uh, northwestern syria uh near the turkish border and i looked into that and um that's a very uh, questionable figure. So the Syrian government has said there are 5,000, has told the Chinese government there are 5,000, or up to 5,000 Uyghurs, um, Uyghur terrorists, radicalized Uyghurs in Syria. And um, um, so the, actually the figure of 20, so I've seen also 10,000 Uyghurs, 15,000, 20,000 in Syria, but he's saying in Idlib, you know, that's wrong. So here it says UN reports that there are uh, 20 to 30,000 people, terrorists, um, uh, regime change assets in Syria. So that figure is wrong. <laughs> I'm just saying that figure. And I, I was kind of digging into where he got that figure and I found this Times of Israel, and um, it has a source for that figure. And I looked into that, and uh, so sh this lady's a propagandist anyway. Um, so her source for that was this institute in Washington, D.C. And the, um, and so the Middle East Media and Research Institute was founded by a former Israeli military intelligence officer and an Israeli American political scientist. 
so this institute, this think tank, a nonprofit press monitoring. Yeah, right. Uh, so it's a propaganda um, NGO. It's an NGO. So it's putting out, pumping out propaganda. So it's interesting uh, who, who started this. And this seems to be where this figure, uh, 20,000 Uyghurs, is coming from. So I think that's exaggerated. And um, yeah, so all these uh, propaganda about we radicalized Uyghurs. Um, this is the uh, Jamestown Foundation, which is an old Cold War think tank. Um, yeah, so they, you know, they, I don't know. So anyway, so Lawrence Wilkerson, um, there's a lot of bullshit in his uh, little clip here. Yeah, so there's a lot of bullshit. And so there's a lot he doesn't explain. So the uh, Afghanistan, so um, the West, the U.S. wanted to destabilize both uh, the USSR, Russia, and China. So they, uh, this came from, I remember recently there, or a couple of years ago, Prince Mohammed bin Salman in Saudi Arabia, he, he said that the U.S. had asked Saudi Arabia to spread Wahhabism. And this was uh, part of their Cold War strategy against the USSR. So this has been called Operation Gladio B, you know, for false flag attacks, Gladio or false flag attacks. So Operation Gladio B, and I will talk about Operation Gladio B. So Gladio B is just a term for this uh, destabilization of uh, uh, the USSR, Russia, and China. Uh, and other countries, really, but mainly uh, those two big targets um, by using radicalized Muslims. And the war, 9-11 and the war of terror is part of that, is part of Gladio B. So that's all it is. He doesn't talk about that, any of that. So he's making it sound like it's just about China uh, when it goes back further. So when um, um, the USSR... The, the Afghan, the leftist Afghan government um, in 1979 asked uh, the USSR for help because they were under attack. They were terrorists. The Mujahideen, those freedom fighters, the West uh, proxy terrorists, um, were attacking the leftist government in Kabul. And so uh, the Soviet Union did not invade Afghanistan. And the, Wilkerson will say that the Soviet Union invaded Afghanistan. He even said, claims that the USSR wanted to go into Iran too, right? Yeah, okay. Um, so he's not giving you the whole story. He's kind of distracting from a lot of things. And he's not really questioning all of this. Um, oh, another thing that he's, he claims in this, I forgot, there's another thing he claims. When he mentions the 20,000 Uyghurs in Idlib, he claims that China is going to send in forces to Syria into Syria. And I go, no, China doesn't do that. So that's his another claim. So he's smearing China. That's what I can't get over. These channels that are, you know, like numb nuts, as I call him. He's put this video out saying this guy is telling us the truth. Well, he's claiming that China is going to invade Syria, you know, because of the Uyghur <laughs> terrorists there. And no. China's been very much concerned because the Uyghurs, you know, they fight there, but really they want to go back to China and fight there. So they're just getting experience in Syria. Anyway, and smearing Turkey. Turkey, um, uh, because Uyghurs are Turkic people, um, they uh, give preferential treatment to uh, Turkic people who are coming into Turkey. And unfortunately, a lot of them were radicalized Uyghurs and Turkey has caught on to this. And so I think they are planning, to, they, they are either already deporting, I think they are deporting Uyghur, radicalized Uyghurs. And they don't always go back to China because some of them are from other, other Central Asian countries. So uh, that's their plan. I think they've started doing that. Um, so they caught on, on to that problem. And the Uyghur, radicalized Uyghurs, the Uyghur terrorists in Syria attack Turkish forces, which conduct joint operations with Russia. So Turkey's had a big problem with 
that border with Syria because of the regime change operation. And uh, I mean, they've had problems with, uh, I mean, this has been going on for a while. So um, that's another smear. So he smears Turkey, he smears China. He, Wilkerson smil, smears China, uh, Turkey, and Pakistan. So there's a lot of bullshit. So it just gives you a little bit of truth, but a lot of lies. Anyway, that's all I want to say for now. So I just wanted to talk about this video and clarify and what he's getting wrong. And people shouldn't get so excited. And it's fine that the foreign ministry, they took the little bit of truth to explain, you know, that uh, all this propaganda is to destabilize China. Um, anyway, so I'll get into Uyghur. I got to talk about the Uyghurs a lot more. So there's a lot of things about the Uyghurs that people are missing. But anyway, I just want to talk about it's fine what the foreign ministry did. That's fine because they gave it context. You know, they just took the little bit that he said for their purposes and that's fine but i really have a problem with numb nuts and others just putting out this as though this were the truth okay that's it for now thank you very much for your patience and i will talk to you again soon.